Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk about my perspective of how Bitcoin mining works. So in general, the miners choose some transactions that are valid, but they have not been included in the blocks. Therefore, the miner chooses some of these transactions of size 1 megabytes, and then the miner starts the process of mining. So let's talk about the goal of Bitcoin mine. At first, uh, we input a string of characters about the information about the transaction like time and other info plus a random number and it will be fed through a system called secure hash algorithm. So the function of this system is to output a fixed length of 256 bits regardless of the size of the input. So there are some characteristics of this system that it will be suitable to be used in the Bitcoin mining. The system is irreversible, meaning that if you have this hash of numbers, you cannot predict or guess the actual input. The other thing that it is deterministic, it means that if you input the same character, you would have get the same output. The other thing is avalanche effect, meaning that if you change your input a little, uh, it will lead to a completely different output. And the last one is uniqueness, meaning that you find some different input and for the output you get the same hash. In reality, the options that we can fit into this system is a lot more than the uh, actual uh, output space the system uh, gives us. But in practice, getting into that point is very hard in terms of hardware, so we assume that the uniqueness is valid for this system. So let's go back and so we fit that string of characters to this secure hash algorithm. And we apply that algorithm two times to prevent the birthday attack. That is the option I talk about uniqueness, meaning that we produce the same hash for two different inputs. So we call that collision. Applying this system two times will help avoiding collision. After that, we compare the output with some target that the system defines, and if the result is not bigger than the target we got this random number to manipulate so we increase that by one actually lines come from the word number once and if the requirement meets the miner will receive some reward in terms of bitcoin and now let's dive deeper to the process of bitcoin mining so the first information we have is about bitcoin client version so the miner announces that what protocols uh, he is following. For the next info, we got the previous block hash. Now this term of blockchain is more meaningful now. Every block is connected to the previous block by the previous block hash. Then we got the Merkle tree root that summarize the transaction that take place in that block. Then we got the time that the miner uh, chooses for the time of mining that block. We got the target that it was that number that will be uh, compared to the output of the secure hash algorithm. And finally, we got this random number. And again, we apply two times secure hash algorithm. If the result is lower than the target, then the Miner broadcasts the result, otherwise the random number uh, is incremented and the process is repeated. Let's look at the Merkle root. So this is Merkle tree. If you look at the leaf of this tree, these are the hash of the transaction that take place in that block. If we go a level higher, the hash of transaction combined together and another hashing, meaning secure hash algorithm is applied to that combination and we go repeat this process until we get to the root of this Merkle tree 
and you can see that it is a summary of all the transactions that take place so let's look at an example this is the some random block if you look at the uh, block transactions we got one transaction for this block another transaction the first one is about a reward that it is the duty of the miner to place that transaction in the top of the block transaction. Suppose that if he successfully mined that block, the reward will be transferred to his address. So Coinbase is about that reward. We put that hashes into the lips of this Merkle tree and we combine these hashes to find the last Merkle tree. The next information is about time. So the time in here is presented in terms of Unix epoch or Unix time. And it defines the number of seconds that have passed since January 1, 1970. So for example, for Genesis block, we got this time. So we convert this time to the Unix time and we convert that to hexadecimal number. The hexadecimal number is similar to decimal number but the base of that number is 16 meaning that if we have 10 option for a decimal number we got 16 here so for decimal number we got 0 to 9 but for hexadecimal we got 0 to 15 and for number 10 to number 15 we got the character of a to f so every hexadecimal character is presented in four bits so if we put two of this character of hexadecimal number we got a byte so for example in here 49 is a byte and then we save the output using little nd it is all about how we actually store information in big and the end we start saving the most valuable bytes first and then we proceed for example in here we actually store 0a for first memory location and we go for lower valuable bytes but in little on the end this is actually exactly the opposite we start storing using the least significant bytes so we actually start from 0d then 0c and so on have in mind that the bitcoin system use little on the end so we must convert the hexadecimal to little n. The next info is about the target. So the target is represented in the block bit information. So this is an integer. We convert that to hexadecimal little n. So in summary we use timestamp Merkle root version bits and previous block hash is also should be used but for the genesis block the previous hash is zeros so let's put all things together we got the client version and it should be eight hexadecimal characters we got the previous block hash that is 64 we got merkle tree root we got time we got target and we got the nonce that is reported for this block and this is the number and we convert that to hexadecimal and we have 160 characters of hexadecimal or 18 bytes so this is the final string combining all of this information we apply two times secure hash algorithm and this is the output and this output is lesser than the target that the system uh, sets for us now let's see how we can calculate the target value from the bits so the bits fields compress the target from 256 bits into 32 bits. So if you look at these plot bits, we convert that to the hexadecimal. It has two parts. Very similar to the scientific notion of a number, we can see that the base or equivalent number A is the second part. And the equivalent of B is the first part that is the first byte of this hexadecimal, minus 3. So from this formula, we can actually calculate the target from the block bits. So if we calculate this, we got this number or its hexadecimal. The last thing I want to talk about is the difficulty. 
In Bitcoin mining, it is a rule that it must take 10 minutes on average to add a new block to the blockchain. Therefore, according to the power of the miners, this difficulty must be changed and in result, the target value will be decreased or increased. So this difficulty number adjusts every 2016 blocks, uh, nearly every two weeks, and they calculate the number that is the expected time for mining those blocks, meaning that these total blocks times 10 minutes divided by the actual time uh, that it took the miners to mine those blocks. And the new difficulty will be adjusted using this number if the alpha is greater than 1, meaning that the blocks were mined quicker, so the difficulty increases. And if the alpha is less than 1, the difficulty decreases. And difficulty will relate to the target with this formula. In this formula, max target is the target that we used in Genesis block. That's all about the theory of how coin mining works. In the next video, I will implement this operation using Python. I hope I see you in the next video.